fifteen and a half thousand dollars. Don't take cheap weddings ever. And then all of a sudden the cash was missing. Oh, uh, dropping my camera from the rooftop. Do you regret it? Sometimes. What's been your worst photography experience? I almost fell off a cliff. So you almost died? Mm, pretty much. Okay, so death? No, not death. I would have broken a couple bones. Okay, so not death? Not death. Oh, uh, dropping my camera from the rooftop? Yeah, like 11 stories high. It hit nobody, so... Did you go back to picking up the pieces? Yeah, I did. It was broken. Did you cry about that? Did you shed a tear? Uh, not really, but I was, I was kind of shocked, you know, like time froze when the when I saw the, the, the camera like, like falling down. So. Will you still shoot over the roofs and everything on top yeah, of I the... do, I do, I do. Like, it's like a, one of the tr legs of the tripod broke, so like the, the whole setup, like, yeah. So it's the tripod's fault? Yeah, it's the tripod's fault. Okay, it's not you? Yeah, not me. Ooh, I, I had a memory card filled the thing completely. I did a brand shoot, took it back home. And uh, the card wouldn't recognize, so I, you know, the, do the whole like try to recover it on your computer, and it, and it wasn't working, uh, and it lost the whole shoot. What's your worst photography experience that you've had? Uh, drunken bride, very cheap wedding. Uh, she's falling off the car, coming out of. Uh, they, they rented the Hummer limo that had like pink lights in, inside, so you couldn't shoot anything. And then she was like, she got drunk on champagne and then she was like rolling in the grass in the front of the Eiffel Tower and I was supposed to take photos of them and it was like, photos you can never use for your portfolio. Don't take cheap weddings, ever. Did she like the pictures? I don't know. Did I she not know. receive them? No, no, they got it. They probably were happy with it, but I was so detached from it that I was like, it's a traumatic experience for me. I had a guy today, I'm not gonna call names, um, white male, walk up to me, Start showing me photos of two other black men, and he was kind of baffled. I was in intrigues after I told him it was really good photos, and he thought it was me. He thought he took photos of me earlier, and this was an intimate conversation he had with these two models. First of all, flattered. Every time you see me since, he's uh, cringed and ran away. He mistaked all the other black people here for the same. We're, we all look alike, pretty much, to him. You definitely could be a model. Thanks. Maybe that's maybe that's what. But you're, you're, no, but you're, no. you're trying to make me blush on camera. No. Okay, cool. I'm but if you can, if you want. I I did. Don't forgive him. That's the next question. <laughs> I don't even. I don't know who he is, but I don't forgive him. No, we're not forgiving him. He's gonna see this too. But we should forgive him. Well, yeah. He he'll repent for his actions eventually, I guess. Okay. Uh, yes, he will. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. I had one client not pay me. That's definitely the worst. I didn't sign a contract. You have to sign a contract. It was like one of my first clients and it was like, we're trading, but we're also paying, but we're also not clear and there's no contract and there's no respect um, for the creator. And they were asking for extra stuff and I was like, no, that's not what we agreed upon. And then all of a sudden the cash was missing. I had a model show up three hours late once. And on top of that, we went to shoot in the park and 20 minutes in, we were asked to leave. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I set up a backdrop. Why was she late three hours? Is that a good excuse? I think she genuinely woke up late, but I think she gave me the excuse of like, oh, my dog was sick or blah, 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 something like that. <laughs> Happens. Does she actually have a dog? I have no idea. I didn't know her that well. Well, today, I put a battery in my camera and it was at 67%. And then I took it out and I had to put another one in. And then I put the, that one on the charger. So that's probably the worst. Is the battery at 100% now? I think so, it's charging in the room. What's your photography secret? Do you have any secrets you wanna share? Anything incriminating? Nothing incriminating, but you should really charge your batteries. Okay. And empty your memory cards. Are we formatting them? Yes, and you learn how to do that, right? <laughs> We're formatting all the cards. All the cards. My secret? It wouldn't be a secret if I told you. Biggest photography secret is um, pretend like you know what you're doing and no one will know any better. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. Every camera is good. It's the one that you could afford and the one that fits your needs. Every single camera is good. And I think that's a secret because oftentimes, especially like you're on YouTube or whatever, you're looking at cameras, and you're like, oh, like what's the best one? And honestly, the answer is all of them. It depends on what you need, not necessarily what just came out. You know what I mean? What about a cheese camera? A cheese camera? Yeah. What's a cheese camera? How many megapixels it got? 1.3 megapixels? I mean, like, if you got the right lighting, you can make anything happen. Uh, the biggest secret is have fun, okay? Go in with your energy, do something you're, you find passionate about, 
that you think is slightly meaningful or that you're having fun with? Photography secret. Um, okay, Lightroom. Nah, like shoot a lot, shoot a lot, shoot a lot. How many pictures are we talking? Like, 100? Oh, like, like trillion, uh, no, no, like terabytes. Like, like, I went to, um, I went to Japan for like a month and I took like five terabytes of photos. So like, that's a lot, I don't know, like 50K shots or something. I don't know, that's very, very. Awesome. You're a busy guy. Not, uh, yeah, sort of. What's your photography secret? Backlight everything. What if you live in the UK? They have backlight there. Or you can create your own. It's possible. Probably Cheez-Its. I wake up in the morning and I have usually a handful. Is it white cheddar or is it like the variety mix? I like the regular. Okay, and what is the most amount of money you've spent on a single piece of camera gear? On the single piece, probably $8,000. Yeah. Do you regret it? Sometimes. It's actually uh, underwater housing, which ended up costing me more than my camera. So I need to make more use of it, and then I'll feel less bad. You know what felt weird? Is that when I would compare side by side my photo in my plastic bag and the $8,000 housing, I couldn't tell the difference. And if that doesn't say it all. So I just bought a red, and I just bought lenses. Like, you want the number? I want numbers. Do you want it in Canadian or US? <laughs> I'm from Canada, I can't, I can't help you. Okay, give us Canadian dollars. Uh, Fifteen and a half thousand dollars. And like one go, because the camera was like, the, the camera, when you do the Canadian conversion, it costs a lot of money, but that's like, you gotta get lenses, cages, all that other stuff. So like, 15 to 16, 17. Why are you asking so many questions? <laughs> Six grand on a camera? At, a, at one time? <laughs> like in a single purchase? Probably in one go. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not that crazy when it comes to spending. I looked at some Cine cameras, had them in the cart, didn't pull the trigger. You know, like 15, 20, 25, I didn't do any of that. Uh, thousand, but I did order three A7S3s when they when they announced that once. That was not a cheap shopping cart. When you add in like some couple memory cards and some taxes and all that kind of stuff, and I ordered them from a U.S. website and I had to pay exchange fees and. What's the number, Gerald? I want to say like what it, that was like thirty five hundred bucks at the time, Miguel. Do you remember A7S3? Yeah, it's thirty five. So three of those plus everything else, probably like twelve, probably twelve in a single cart. I don't know. Which felt like a lot. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah, twelve thousand. The most expensive one was A7S3. That's like close to on um, three point five k ish. I think that that's about it. Single piece yeah. Okay, that's a but that's on budget. Okay, yeah. not bad. Yeah. We had like people saying like tens of thousands of dollars. Oh shit! Yeah, not me. The device I mentioned before, the Sony A1. I think that was my most expensive purchase, most likely. You got a number that you spent on the camera. I believe the camera is $6,500. This is a $10,000 rental right here, the A1 with the 35 1.4. Just don't return it. This is, this is the purchase I was talking about, but it's not a purchase, you know what I mean? It could be, if you forget to return it. It really could be. Just a lapse of judgment, right? You know, just oops. Oops, I'm at the airport with this gear. Come find me, is this even my real name? I spent $6,000 on a Leica M10. And it's probably my favorite camera I've ever used. Most I've ever spent on a piece of camera gear was around $11,000. That was for the Sony FX9, and I use it every single day. So that's the most I've ever spent. My most expensive camera that I've ever bought is like around $3,300. 6000 maybe? Camera body, A7S is 6000 What's your advice to beginners? Practice. Practice, practice, practice. Just whatever you are uncomfortable with, try to do that the most. Always have your camera on you. Always have your gear on you. Have it with a strap around you. Always be shooting. The more you have it in your hand and you're using it, the better you will get. Never leave home without the camera. Never leave home without the camera. Before keys, wallet, cell phone, the camera. Before water? No, not before water. <laughs> Stay hydrated, everybody. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Anyone can take a good photo, right? If you're in the right place at the right time, the lighting is nice, something's happening, you're there and you have a camera, take a photo, you could get a great photo. But I think what separates a good photographer from a great photographer is someone that could tell a story with a series of images. And that's also how the best way, in my opinion, to get client work. If you're buying stuff, spend more money on like lighting than you spend on cameras and stuff like that. Or I guess learn how to 
shoot natural light nicely, which then you could spend money on modifiers. Spend more time trying than you are thinking about it. That's the biggest one, right? Like even if you mess up a year from now, you won't even remember some of the mess ups. You know what I mean? Like you'll look at it and if, and if you're not looking back at your work and be like, mm, I didn't like that then you're probably not growing as quickly as you want to. So I'd say spend more time. Spend more time actually in the field and less time actually watching YouTube videos about people in the field. What's your advice to beginners? Shoot a lot. Practice. Shoot 50,000 pictures. Yeah, shoot 50,000 pictures. One of them must be good. What if it's not? Then shoot 50 more. So 100,000 pictures. Yes. Watch a lot of YouTube to make sure you're actually learning your camera. And then your photos will suck for a long time, but it's okay. You'll get through it. You might, and you might think you're a genius. I promise you, you're probably not as good as you think you are. Because I went through that. But it, it's a humbling experience. And it's so much fun. You know, learning is fun. So just, you know, you keep at it. You keep at it and you'll, you'll, you'll do great. Just give yourself a couple years. My advice to beginners for photographers is to just get out there and shoot as much as you can. Don't even worry too much about the end product or compare yourself to other people. What's really important is that you get out there and actually do it and you're going to learn a lot from your mistakes. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, tips I could give to a beginner. You can get ahead by being consistent. And I think consistency is key. No matter your level of skill, your understanding of photography or videography, um, staying consistent and trying, making content is... I, Daily content is good, but as consistent as you can. When is the last time you were kicked out? Of what? Photography stuff. Mm. I don't think I have been before. I've actually not been kicked out of anything taking photos, nah. So you're like Articuno around here, you're like rare Pokemon. Nah, it's one of the, it's one of the dogs. Because the dogs, once they see somebody, they run away. So I haven't been kicked out, I've just escaped. I didn't say I didn't leave, I just said I haven't been kicked out. There's a difference. So you ran away? I mean, I jogged. Briskly? Mm, you know, quickly. Probably the last time I got kicked out was when I was on top of a parking lot rooftop. I was shooting some cars there and the security came up, rolled up on me and just told me to leave. I was like begging for like at least like 10 more minutes, 20 more minutes to get the shot. And uh, I was not blessed that night and I was kicked out right away. Would you go back up there and risk getting kicked out again? I would. I would. I absolutely would. Is that an admission of guilt? No. Anything for the shot, it, that's how I see it. Whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. That's legal, not illegal, it doesn't matter. That's the photographer's mentality. I was shooting a mirrorless camera with another mirrorless camera, which was then shot by my cinema camera. It made sense because the shot needed a subject, and then I was doing a video on the camera in the middle, and then the last camera was giving me the shot that I needed to use in the video. And as soon as they saw three cameras, the park ranger came by and like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just making a YouTube video. And she's like, you can't do that here, go. I'm like, okay, bye. She only let me do two shots in the park and then I had to leave. That's a very Canadian way of getting kicked out. I was, uh, I went to an event in Malaysia and then I took a detour, I went to China. I was on this roof, I was kicked out by the security over there. Did they confiscate your gear? Did, did they do anything? Did, uh, like they, they asked for our like IDs and everything, but like I said, like, I came from the US, so like, you know. They got us out. They let you go. Yeah. They're like, oh, there's just American, bunch yeah. of Americans. Yeah, yeah. Used to happen often. Then I got sneakier. Then you just act like I'm here to take photos, and you go with these eyes, and no okay. one will ever question you. Could you show me how to do that? Okay. Power stance. Okay. Hold the camera up, kind of like a like it's like your self defense mechanism or whatever, very confidently, and you just go. Direct eye contact? Direct eye contact. Okay. And then they're like, please. Go ahead, okay. Even even like kind of forward, right? Because you're already walking. And you just keep your so eyes you locked. eye contact, you're like, the whole time. respect, respect. Okay. And then you go. And then you don't need a permit. Uh, I had one time that somebody tried to kick me out and uh, they, they said, hey, you can't be here. And, and I, I did this and that's the end of that. That would actually be another tip for beginners develop your very aggressive look so that when they try to kick you out just with, with sunglasses yeah and you know the other thing too is stare at them for a while after they've told you to leave like are you do, are you doing it right now I was. oh okay I was, yeah. yes. was the person who confronted you to leave uh, in a stroller by chance no surprisingly what is your sign I'm a Capricorn what about you oh 
Don't do that. I think it's over. We're done.